This video is about the parts of a river. Let's start with a little background vocabulary. All of the land that is drained by a river and all of its tributaries is called a river basin. The high land or mountains that form the peaks around the basin are called the divide. The land drained by each smaller tributary is called a watershed. There can be many watersheds that make up a river basin. Typically, scientists think about a river basin as being split into three distinct parts. An upper part, a middle part, and a lower part. Now let's look at the parts of a river basin starting at the beginning of a river, the upper part of a river system. The source of a river, known as the headwaters, is high in the mountains or hills where precipitation gathers in rivulets and streams. These headwaters are where the tiny creeks fueled by runoff join together to form the beginning of the river. Because the terrain is steep near the source of a river, the water moves quickly and there is much erosion or cutting away of the rocks and soils. Very little sediment is deposited in the upper part. The waterbed tends to be V-shaped due to this erosion and the fast moving water with so much mechanical energy tends to cut deep valleys into the terrain, carrying with it any soil in its path. Because of this, the river bottom in this upper region is generally rocky. At the middle part of a river, the river starts to widen and form meanders and oxbow lakes. As the river moves out of the mountains and into the plains, the terrain is flatter and less steep. Meanders start to form in the river and old meanders form oxbow lakes. Smaller streams and also smaller rivers that feed into a larger river are called tributaries of that river. As more and more tributaries join with the river, the volume of water in the river increases. Because the land is now less steep in this middle part, the water moves more slowly. The river bottom tends to be a combination of smaller rocks and sediment. Both erosion and deposition are occurring at pretty equal rates. With the slowing of the water in this middle part, the river now tends to get wider and also deeper. Water will always take the path of least resistance, meaning that if it encounters an obstruction, such as a boulder or a tree, the water will go around that obstruction. This starts the process that forms meanders. When meanders get to the point where they almost meet, eventually the water will take the shortcut through the land, cutting a meander off from the rest of the river. Over time, an oxbow lake is formed. As you can see in this diagram, meanders form curved pieces. The outside of each curve is where the water moves fastest, and so erosion is occurring at these red locations. The outside of the curve, erosion. The inside of the curve where the water moves more slowly is where deposition is occurring or deposits of sediment and silt are forming, like little beaches are forming there. So over time, the outsides are eroding away while the insides are filling in with those deposits. And as that occurs, you can see that the river meander is these parts of the meander are getting closer and closer together. Over time, those parts will meet and the water will just flow straight through instead of going around the meander. 
over time, this cutoff meander will become what we call an oxbow lake. In this diagram, you can see that this oxbow lake was formed more recently. It still has water in it. This older oxbow lake, however, is undergoing a process called eutrophication, where the dead plant material, the algae and other plant material that was in that portion of that lake, and the decomposing um, animal organisms as well, fish and snails and things that die, um, are filling in the bottom of what used to be a lake and are now part of that field, that surrounding field, a very fertile part of that field because of all that decomposing material, but, uh, but now it's no longer a lake. Because rivers are a good source of transportation, cities are often built next to rivers. In addition, riverfront land is extremely fertile due to the deposition of sediment over time, so farmers find the land next to rivers extremely valuable too. The flat land on either side of a river, between and around the meanders, is called the floodplain as after torrential rainstorms, this land often becomes flooded with water. So even though the land next to rivers is valuable, there's a downside to building cities and farms adjacent to rivers. Rivers can flood and cause billions of dollars of damage to property. The lower part of a river is the area where the river meets a larger body of water, such as a lake or the ocean. Here in the lower part, the water in the river slows down tremendously at the mouth as it bumps up against the water that is already in the lake or the ocean. As you can see in this diagram, as the river moves downstream into the lake or the ocean, there's already water in the lake or the ocean. And as that water from the river bumps into the existing water, it slows down even further. Near the mouth, there is very little difference in elevation as well. So the force of gravity on the water is very low. Again, the river slows down. In cross-section, the river widens and becomes very shallow. Because the water at the mouth is moving very slowly, there is very little mechanical energy from the movement of water. Because of this, much of the remaining silt and sediment gets dropped at the mouth, forming a very fertile delta. And that's the end.